Glad to have you with us on Seahawks Today. Tyler Jones here as we now have an updated look at the top eight candidates for the Seattle Seahawks coaching position. We have now with a weekend to this process looked at what people are talking about as I put it in two categories, the short list and the long shot. And then we'll kind of just break things down from there and what we're hearing on some different things and the likelihood of some of these names becoming the next Seahawks head coach. We'll tell you about it coming up in just a matter of moments. Before we do, if you want the Seahawks to make the right hire, like the video. Simple as that. I've been told in science that the Seahawks have a better chance of hiring the right coach if you like today's video. So do your part. Don't question it. Just believe me. Believe me, folks. Like the video, we can start with today's show. All right, let's start with the short list. Got to begin with Dan Quinn, of course. Dan Quinn, before this job was even open, was the favorite for the opening to be the next head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, and for various reasons, right? He was part of this organization when they won the Super Bowl uh, several years ago. He uh, took the Atlanta Falcons to the Super Bowl when he was their head coach, and what he's done is the Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator over the last few years went been one of the best DCs in all of football. And I think there's some hesitation of sorts after the last time we saw the Cowboys in the football field this past Sunday against the Green Bay Packers, that Cowboys defense looked bad. Now, granted, they didn't get any help from their offense when Dak had two turnovers in that game. But nonetheless, Dan Quinn is still the favorite, even despite – one game of what happened this past week there against Green Bay. And I'll say this. If the Seahawks end up hiring Dan Quinn, the thing I'm watching for that I think is almost just as important is who they hire as an OC. Because it was two different worlds with Dan Quinn when he had Kyle Shanahan and when they moved on from Kyle Shanahan, when he went to the San Francisco 49ers to be their head coach. Dan Quinn, you got to get the OC right. If you're going to do that, you got to lay everything out in the line to get the right OC for this job. Number two, Ben Johnson, the Detroit Lions offensive coordinator. The Lions with a big playoff game coming up this weekend against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a chance to go to the NFC Championship game. Ben Johnson has done a great job with this uh, Detroit Lions team and helping lead this team to their first ever NFC North Division title, the way we've seen Jared Goff really just take off and has been fantastic for the Detroit Lions team. This has been a great story, and Ben Johnson's a big part of it. I think he's the best young offensive mind that the NFL has to offer right now. And I'll say this. If Seattle doesn't hire him, somebody else will. There are a number of teams, we've talked about it on this program, that are lining up with interest in Ben Johnson. So you might – if you say no, be passing on the next great young offensive coach because that's what all signs kind of point to and indicate the potential is there for Ben Johnson. Which coach would you rather have, Dan Quinn or Ben Johnson? Type D for Dan Quinn. Show the D in the chat. If you're going with Ben Johnson, put the B in the chat. Let us know which one you're rolling with, Dan Quinn or Ben Johnson. Which coach would you rather have? Let us know in the comment section below. Today's show is sponsored by Factor. I got to tell you, as a bachelor, I love me some Factor meals. Very easy to make, very tasty. You can't miss out with Factor meals. Get started in your resolutions with Factor so you're ready for the new year. Factor's ready meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door with over 35 meals to choose from per week including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, plus veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons. You'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget frantic lunch preps and rush dinners. Factors two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Feel up fast with restaurant-quality meals, all delivered right to your door. When things get hectic, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com, so CLXJet50, and use code CLXJet50 to get 50% off. That's code CLXJet50 at factormeals.com, so CLXJet50 to get 50% off. 
The link is in the comments and description of today's video. Factor Meals, proud partner of COS Today by Chad Sports. Mm-mm, good. All right. Mike McDonald. Now, if you recall, over the weekend, we told you that Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network uh, put out a report that the Seahawks were expected to interview Mike McDonald. And we're still waiting on all the details of that to come out of how that interview is going to happen. Uh, but nonetheless, Mike McDonald will be somebody that I think the Seahawks are very interested in. We talked about Ben Johnson being the best young offensive mind. I think if we were to flip things over, if you're looking for a young defensive mind, Mike McDonald is that guy. And the thing that I like, too, is this is somebody that's been successful at two different levels, right? The Baltimore Ravens have one of the best defenses in all the NFL. This weekend, they're playing for a spot in the AFC Championship game, best record in the AFC. That defense with Roquan Smith and uh, Marcus Williams, Marlon Humphrey, Patrick Queen and company is just absolutely incredible what he's done to develop that group. But before that, at Michigan, too, did a really good job under Jim Harbaugh there with that coaching staff. That shows me an ability to adapt and a young voice. Guys are buying in to what Mike McDonald is selling. I like McDonald a lot. Another name, Bobby Slowick, the Houston Texans offensive coordinator. And I got to tell you, with Bobby Slowick, his name has picked up a lot of momentum just within the last few days. The Houston Texans had a resounding win over the Cleveland Browns over the weekend in the wild card round. Shocked a lot of people with the performance that the Houston Texans put together. And that was supposed to be one of the best defenses in football, right, that they were facing in Cleveland, who they'd lost to just a couple weeks prior, and they look great. And the development of C.J. Stroud, what C.J. Stroud has become as a rookie, Bobby Slowick deserves a lot of credit for that. The Seahawks, we've said before, that when you look at their quarterback situation, they might bring Geno back, but it's not a long-term plan, right? The next head coach has to develop a young quarterback. And if you're looking specifically for somebody to develop a young quarterback, Slowick has been there and done that with C.J. Stroud. It's been an impressive job this season, and that's why he's being mentioned for these coaching jobs for how well he's worked with C.J. Stroud this year. Next on the list, Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator for the Los Angeles Rams. Seahawks fans, very familiar with Raheem Morris, with uh, the job that he's done in Los Angeles, with facing his Rams defenses twice a year. And he's done a really good job. Two-time uh, Super Bowl champion as an assistant, both with the Rams and the Bucks many years ago. Uh, was the former head coach of the Buccaneers from 2009 to 2011. Also was the interim head coach for the Atlanta Falcons at one point in time. Uh, Ray Morris, I will say, the last time that he was a head coach, when you look at what he did with the Bucs, and even as the interim for the Atlanta Falcons, 21 in 38 was his overall record. And what I don't know, personally, I don't know the answer to this question. Is he a different coach than when he was a 21 and 38 head coach? How much has he changed for the better? Or is he still the same 21 and 38 head coach? I don't know that answer to that question. That doesn't make me confident hiring him when I don't know that answer. Who would you hire? to be the next Seattle Seahawks head coach. If you were John Schneider, and I could let you pick anybody you wanted, and money was not an issue, who would you hire to be the next Seahawks head coach? Way in the comments section, tell me who that coach would be in your opinion. Folks, we are your Seattle Seahawks offseason headquarters. We're covering this coaching search each and every single day. We're also bringing in our daily news and rumors. We're talking draft, trades, free agency, the entire offseason, no one else is talking about your Seahawks like we are here on Seahawks today. The best part about it is that when you subscribe, it doesn't cost a thing. Absolutely 100% positively free. Subscribe now. Stay informed. Stay alert on everything with your Seattle Seahawks. This is the place for it right here on Seahawks today. Now let's go to the long shot. And this is the name that could join the short list, but at least at the moment is a long shot. We've heard from people like Albert Breer and Dan Graziano and others say that Mike Vrabel makes a ton of sense for the Seattle Seahawks, and they're hearing some rumblings about that. But 
At the time of this recording, there's still no formal interview request just yet. But you look at Mike Vrabel, did a great job with Tennessee. I thought he was wrongfully fired. I mean, to win two division titles, go to an AFC championship game, even with Tannehill as your quarterback, he did an awesome job. I think he's a top five coach in the league. And it doesn't make any sense to me why he hasn't at least been requested for an interview at this point. Why would you at least not want to pick his brain and see what he has to say about the CLC Hawks organization? Mike Vrabel, to me, would be a home run. I get it that he's a defense guy first. But if you can win with Tannehill, let's get the man a quarterback and see what he can actually do at that point. That's intriguing. Another long shot. The name that I like more than anybody is Jim Harbaugh. And Jim Harbaugh has already talked to the Chargers, the Atlanta Falcons, uh, some of these teams that I think indicate that he is very, very interested in that return to the NFL. And I mean, simply put, when you look at Jim Harbaugh, this is somebody that's won everywhere he's been. I mean, from the University of San Diego to Stanford to the 49ers, now to Michigan, Harbaugh keeps winning and winning and winning. Even this year, a national championship title with that uh, that Michigan program this year. And you're doing the impossible, right? We told we're told he can't beat he can't beat Ohio State. He can't get the job done, and yet he still found a way to get the job done. And he would be a natural fit in the National Football League. We've seen him be successful before. And there's some of you that are saying, well, I don't like his ties to the 49ers. And he was the former 49ers head coach. Shut up. Who cares? I want a guy that wins. I I, I don't care if if Jim Harbaugh was the head coach of Afghanistan. He was a winner. I'll take him. I don't care about anything that happened with the Niners. In fact, Harbaugh probably – doesn't want to be reminded of his time in San Francisco because things didn't finish out well between him and the York family. Believe me, he is not looking to do anything for the York family and do any favors for them. So I would love the idea, personally. Who should the Seahawks not hire as their next head coach? What do you think? Who is a name that comes to mind that you do not, under any circumstance, want to see as the next head coach of the Seattle Seahawks Weigh in the comment section. Tell us what you think. Last on the long shots list, Dave Canales, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive coordinator. And this is a name that has picked up momentum in the last few days, but we're still waiting on a formal interview request and all that. Canales obviously has connections with the Seahawks organization, spent over a decade as an offensive assistant. Pete Carroll never gave him the shot to be O.C., And to me, that is uh, an indictment on Pete Carroll. I thought when I look at the job Canales has done this year in Tampa Bay after working with Geno last year and now with Baker Mayfield this year, to me, that that tells me that Pete made a mistake not giving this guy a shot. And the thing that would hold me back, at least from him being ready to be a head coach, it's still a small sample size. He's only been an OC for a year. Uh, he's only been away from the Seahawks organization for a year. I want to see more, potentially, from Dave at this point. But I like what I've seen so far. If you enjoy today's show, if you want the Seahawks to make the right hire, like the video. Simple as that. We'd appreciate it. We'll see you next time right here on Seahawks Today. 